Hello, uh, people that watch my videos. Today's tutorial is gonna be the coolest one yet. We're gonna talk about proximity prompts. Yeah. Okay, okay. They might not be the craziest thing. I'm pretty sure everybody who's Robloxed before knows what a proximity prompt is. Like, a press E to do something button. But I figured I want to talk about them anyway because they're pretty useful. There's actually a lot of events I didn't really know they had. I just thought, oh, you trigger them, and that's it. But no, there's a lot more you can do with a proximity prompt. Let's get into that. First is making the prompt itself. If you don't know how to make one, it's pretty easy. You just get a part, and you see this little plus icon, click it, and you do proximity prompt. And now we have that. There's a few properties I would like to explain, but there's this nice diagram which makes uh, things look simpler. So I'm gonna use that instead of pressing play every time I wanna show something. So first is the action text. And right here you can see it's a text that's gonna be in the middle of the prompt. Oh, let's make it bigger. Okay, it's the text that's going to be in the middle of the prompt, the interact text. There's also object text, which is a little text that's optional, which can go above the interact. It's smaller. It usually sits up here. And then this is the key itself. And keyboard key code and gamepad key code, I'll show you those in studio. So before we get to that, there's a few uh, little checkboxes here. So you have click little prompt. If you disable this, you have to press E or whatever the key is to activate the prompt. But if this is enabled, you can click it. So it's recommended you keep this enabled if, you know, you want mobile support in your game. Otherwise, you could disable that. And enabled is pretty simple. It won't show the prompt if uh, this is disabled. So, like, if this isn't clicked, the prompt won't show. But if it is, then it will show the prompt. Exclusivity. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. One per button. Say there's one prompt that takes an F to press it. And there's one that takes an E. It will show both of those even if they're next to each other. But if there's two prompts that have an E, like you two E prompts, you it will only show one at a time. One globally will only show one proximity prompt at a uh, time no matter what. So like, even if they're all different keys, it will only show one at a time. And always show will show every proximity prompt, like at the same time. So if there's a bunch next to each other, you'll see all of them, even if they're the same key. Gamepad key code, like in this little diagram here, this little image, uh, it's for controllers. So like you could do, you see this button A, button B. So if you wanted to add a uh, button, oh my God. If you wanted to add controller support, you'd use this. Uh, keyboard key code is like the same thing, except it's for, you know, a keyboard. So they have like every key. You could switch it to be B if you wanted to, but I'm gonna keep it as uh, E. Hold duration is the amount of seconds it takes to activate. So by default, when you press it, there's no wait. But if you wanted to be like a scummy, game developer, like the people who make those whack like experience games, you could just do this. And now peak gameplay, which will get you a whole lot of premium payouts. But hey, you didn't hear that from me. Okay, let's put that back to uh, let's put it at one uh, max activation distance. I think it's in studs because everything's in studs. But basically, if you, if you go and play it in Roblox, you'll see that by default, you can't even see that prompt. But when you're near it, you can. That's just Changing this number just changes like how far away you have to be from the prompt to activate it. So like if you put it at 500, you should be able to see the prompt from like a pretty far away distance. I don't know why you'd want this, but you could do it. Let's put that back to 10. Object text. I already talked about that. It's like the little text that appears above the interact. So like say we were describing this, this is a part. We could put part as the object text. And if we play it in studio, you can see there's just a nice little like gray text that says part. Requires line of sight. It's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if there's a wall in front of this part, you if this is enabled, you'll uh you won't be able to see the prompt through the wall. But if you disable this, you can see the prompt through the wall if you're close enough. So yeah. Style, I'm not like I I usually don't make custom proximity prompts, but I want to do an advanced tutorial, so I'm gonna save that for the next one. So I don't like talk your ears off for too long. It's just for like theming the prompts, making them look fancy and custom. UI offset makes the prompt go up and down like the UI itself, up, down, left, right. That's how you would change where the proximity prompt itself is. And yeah, that's basically all of the properties. So let's add a script. We'll just put the script inside of this part. And I'm not going to name it because I'm just lazy. But don't be like me. Make sure you name your script something. Otherwise, you're going to have a million of the same thing in your little bar and it's going to get annoying. All right, so let's get the proximity prompt itself. We'll do local prox. I like to do prox because proximity prompt equals uh, script dot uh, parent dot proximity prompt. And now we can use our first event, prox dot triggered connect function. 
the parameter here, yeah, like as you can see, if you put anything here, it doesn't matter what the name is, but we can do player.name. So when we, oh my god, print player.name. So like if we go and hold this prompt, we triggered it and it printed my name. That's the first event. It's just triggered. So we can do print player.name as triggered the prompt. And then we can copy this. And we can do trigger ended, which is the second event. Has, uh, I don't know, untriggered the prompt. I don't know if you put one of those there. I'm not sure. Un is, I don't know how to spell. Spelling bad. So if you hold it, it prints my name. Arca oh, there's no space. Okay, we're going to ignore that. Arcade Games has triggered the prompt. And if I let go, Arcade Games has untriggered the prompt. For OCD purposes, put a space here. Oops, not there. Here. All right. There's two more uh, events that we can use. So we can also do hold, uh, prompt hold button, prompt button hold began. So, uh, we can do player.name is holding the prompt. And if we copy this code, we can also do prompt button hold ended. And we can do player.name as stop holding the prompt. So this is for detecting when it's being held, and this is for detecting when the player has stopped holding it. So if I go and hold this, you see it says I'm holding it. Uh, oh my god, that's too fast. Hold on, let me give myself some time to react. Brain slow, uh, brain slow, yes. Let's give ourselves five seconds. Okay, so if you hold the prompt, it says I'm holding it. If I let go, it says I stopped holding it. That's pretty simple, right? And there's two more events, but they can only be activated from the client. So let's put a script inside of the starter GUI just because the local prox equals game.workspace dot uh, part dot proximity prompt. Now I can talk about the last two uh, events. So it's prox dot, and I think it's prompt. Yeah, prompt shown, connect function, and there's also prompt hidden. Now, since we're in a local script, I don't think putting player here will return the player like it would before. I think it's some weird, like it's some weird keyboard input stuff. I'm not exactly too sure, but we could do local uh, player equals game dot players dot local player. So now we could just print the player's name. So we'll just print player dot name dot dot as uh, is looking at the prompt. And then we'll just copy this little thing of code we'll paste it is and we'll just add a not it's not looking at the prompt and if we go into a studio if we play it i mean you see that yeah print my name i'm looking i'm not looking i didn't know prompts could detect when you saw them like this i really didn't so that's pretty cool we can make it so like if we can add like a particle emitter so like we'll just add a few particles uh, I don't really mess with particles a lot, but I'm definitely going to make a tutorial about them. Let's just change the size like this. We'll make it so they taper off, they shrink as they get older. And we'll also change the lifespan. I'm just going to drag this down. I want less prompts. I mean, <laughs> I want less of the sparkles. Alright, I'm going to change the speed too, because I'm kind of having an OCD meltdown. And let's just disable this. Inside of our script, we can do local particles equals procs.parent.particle emitter. And then we can just do particle, oops, particles.enable equal true. And then we can do, oops, don't do that. Particles.enable equal false. So when you see this prompt, like say there's a door, when you notice it and you look at it for a long time, you can make it so like, oh wow, it knows I'm looking. So it's sparkly when i go away it stops doing that i don't know that's pretty it's just cool and like if you hold it let's see how long is our prompt hold for it's five seconds so if we add like i'm adding a bunch of spaces i hope it makes it easier to read i'm not sure local uh tween service equals game uh get service tween service and we could just do particles dot okay okay wait, wait, let's tween it it's actually so we could just do teen service create Articles, uh, tween info.new, five seconds, because that's how long it takes for our prompt to be activated. We'll do color 
equals color 3 that from RGB. And I'm gonna make it purple. Uh, we're just gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll play it. I wrote the code in this script, but you can't. I just realized you can't use it in the script. It's kind of dumb. So just copy the uh, tween surface and little tween and go back to the main script, paste it. Uh, get the particles as well. All right. And now we have our tween. So inside of the prompt hold button began thingy, just do that. Just paste this code. So as we're holding it, it's going to change. And right here, when we stop holding it, we'll just make it so it goes back to like white. And we'll make it go back in a second. It will only take one second. All right, so I'm dumb and I don't really want to explain color sequences right now. So we're just going to change the color of the part. You can remove this little like... Well, actually, we'll keep this uh, tween code. But delete the bottom one. We're just going to... Instead of doing the particles, we're going to do the part itself. So we can do local uh, part equals script dot parent. And then we can just part color equals color 3 dot from RGB and we're gonna make it I don't know purple I really like purple today oops there's another one of those get rid of that if, there, if you have an extra one here because you copied exactly what I did just delete it uh you can copy this code paste it here instead of five seconds make it one so it takes five seconds for the prompt to activate meaning this color boy hold on I forgot to change something right here this changes bottom on the uh, bottom one to whatever the color was before in our case it's white so just make it white now, since it takes five seconds to uh, activate this, ooh, that's cool. And then uh, the tween is five seconds. You should have a slow fading thing. But if you let go, it immediately goes back to white. Which is, I think that's pretty cool. I don't know. Prompts are awesome. And I, I don't know. There's a lot of cool things you could do with prompts. But yeah, experiment. Uh, Don't make anything blow up like I did. Unless you really want to. Have a good day.